Hello guys, I'm back from another video and today we're talking about what if Deku never got one for all. So, in the last video we talked about how during the whole, you know, thing, she would start to explain about these chosen. Chosen just like Izuku. In this case, Mordred was basically telling him about it. Apparently, the Chosen were created after Elia learned that Quirks started becoming, you know, much more prominent again. Because of this, she would start to create these people, or more specifically, quirkless individuals that would be given the powers of heroic spirits from the past, present, or you could say future. So, after giving these powers to them, they would be the force to destroy this road of quirks, or more specifically, to end it in their own way. In this case, they're going to be planning on basically showing the world how cruel this world really is because of quirks, and wanting a world of equality. So after being told of this, he would leave, as Izuka would tell this to Stain. After Stain would be, you know, would be hearing about this, he was surprised but also quite angry at himself for basically being a part of the cause of all of this suffering for the quirkless. But he would explain that it's not his fault. But more like it's the hero's fault. The fake ones to be more precise. So, after doing this, Stain would also tell him that he's planning on going to the UA training camp to basically fight off against the League of Villains that are planning on getting this Bakko Katsuki kid. When Izuku heard that, he would be pissed, and when, you know, um, when he saw that, he would basically start running for the hills. So, the next day comes as... All of the members of the, you know, Chosen, and also, um, wait for a second, and Stain would be told to go to the U, to the UA, um, training camp to basically fight off against the League of Villains. Even though Izuku doesn't really want to, because he's no way, because there's no way that he's going to be saving Bakko Katsuki. Katsuki because after all he did tell him to basically go kill himself and he actually wants him to get captured because that would be one of the reasons why he decided to kill him or maybe even kill him right now foreshadowing so after getting there with the help of Talos they would basically start going in saving some you know students of UA but um some of the villains would basically be defeated except for a few which some of them being Nomu basically killed both Mordred and Scotty, being the representative for the caster and saber. So, when Moriarty saw this, he would also see that, well, O for One arrived. And not only that, two heroes, specifically Mount Lady and a certain number six hero by the name of Mirko, would arrive as well, trying to basically fight off against, you know, O for One. And when he saw the dead bodies of both Saber and, you know, Caster being, you know, Mordred and also Scotty, he would be pissed as he would start using his most powerful noble phantasm, otherwise known as Dynamics of an Asteroid, where he basically kills himself after using it. So, after using it, he would basically die. And as for all for one, he would be damaged, but not as damaged as like, you know, basically almost at death store, where he basically gets all of their quirks, specifically the quirks of Mount Lady, Miriko, and finally, Meihatsume. So, after he does escape, all of them, mostly the members of the, you know, Chosen that are not basically killed and also um, Stain, they would basically start escaping as they got back home. With Izuku with a heavy heart, well, Izuku would fall asleep, knowing that his three comrades, which he doesn't know really personally, or even at all, because they actually met a few days ago, he does care for them. After all, they basically are basically like the same. After all, they were quirkless until they were given power by a higher being, being those heroic spirits. So, Izuku would dream off as he would fall asleep. So, 
That is basically what happened last episode. And so, let's talk about what happens next. So, instead of the perspective of Izuku Midoriya, we're going to be moving to a different perspective. In this case, a girl by the name of Mirko. So, Mirko is currently depressed after getting her quirk stolen by All for One. She's just a normal ass girl now, but she is still strong, physically anyway, but thanks to her quirk being stolen, it basically diminished her, as she started staying in her room a little bit longer than usual, basically slumping in the corner of her room, basically, basically super depressed, as she would think in her mind, I'm weak again, I'm just, I'm, I'm just weak now. My quirk is stolen. That bastard all for one. It's his fault. He stole my quirk. And whoever those people are, they basically tried to save me. But I was too weak. I got my quirk stolen. Now I'm... I'm quirkless. Wait. Wait. I'm quirkless. Just like... As she would remember Izuku, basically giving her that nice smile as she would start getting reminded by him, as she would say this. I yeah, Izuku, he is quirkless, but he didn't really care. He was strong. But I am quirkless. And now everybody's going to think that I'm weak. But I'm not. I will show them that I'm not weak. I am not weak. As she would hear a voice behind her. She would hear. So, you believe yourself to not be weak, eh? <laughs> it's been a long time since I've seen a person just like you. You kind of remind me of me. But except, you know, without the tan skin. As she would look behind her, as she would see a woman wearing almost feudal Japanese clothing with golden iron boots and seems to be um flying somewhat as she seems to be well behind her seems to be several and I mean several guns basically flowing behind her as she would say this so I'm guessing that you're one of the chosen or more specifically my chosen as she would say this who the hell are you are you a villain? As she would get into a fighting stance, as she would be reminded that she was quirkless. Um, sorry, but unfortunately I'm not a villain. Besides, I'm basically going to give you my power. But first you need to do some training. As she would say this. Give you power? Give me power? What are you saying? As she would say this. Heh. <laughs> I guess I should I guess I should probably explain. So, after explaining the whole like story about like Elia and also Gaia about this and also about like, you know, the quirkness being punished for no reason and also basically being, you know, Oda Nobunaga. Yes, that's literally Oda Nobunaga even though I said that she looked like a girl. So, yeah, let's just say Mirko was completely just like what? As she would say this. Yeah, apparently all the stories about me being a boy, well, it's just because of my cowardly, insolent little shits of soldiers thinking that I should probably be a man instead of a girl. Mostly because they were so pissing in their pants. <laughs> they were so scared that they even thought of me as a boy. <laughs> anyway, as she would stand up, as she would say this. So, you want to get revenge of that O for one person, right? So... But before you can actually do that, I want you to try and use your power. Use my power. But you need to do some training first. So, she was brought to a large field. A field that almost resembles a gigantic battlefield filled with dead bodies. It was like she was teleported. As she would say this, where the hell am I? As... Nomonaga would say this. Well, you're in my mindscape. Or more specifically, the place where I died. 
I was killed in this battlefield by my own retainer. <sighs> that damn bitch of a person. I even trusted him. Oh well. Anyway, I want you to try and practice using these, as she would basically throw some of her guns at her. As she would say this. Wait, but I'm not really um, good with guns. I mean, I'm not really... As she would say this. Oh, come on. Don't worry. Besides, you just need to throw them away and then you can just summon them back. Okay? So, she would go along with this. A few days have gone by. She would be training with Oda Nomunaga as she would become the representative for the Archer class. Even though the Archer class is mostly... Um, mostly filled with people that basically just, like, use projectiles. I mean, there's literally a server that literally shoots out dolphins, for God's sakes. And I'm not even kidding. <laughs> so, she would basically start becoming a master at her, you know, craft. Being using, you know, um, being, um, used for, you know, using guns. Or, more specifically, um, the rifles... Back in the day, the um gunpowder type of ones. So, she would start using them almost like a master, thanks to the guidance of Oda Nomunaga. Until one day, she would tell her that it's finally time for her to meet her comrades. But she needs to accept that, you know, that she's gonna be leaving now. As when she hears this, she would say this being, you know, Mirko, what do you mean by leaving? As she would say this, well, let's just say I'm done teaching you now. My time is finally over. My legacy is finally being fulfilled. As she would start turning into you, like this almost like red dust, as she would say this, Oda, what are you doing? As she would say this, oh, it's just the throne. The throne of heroes are calling me back. Calling me back. To go back. To where I belong. So. She would disappear. And something would be left behind. A red spider lily. Dropping to the ground as. She would basically cry. So. Mirko would cry. For like a day now. As she would say this, I'll, I'll honor your legacy, Oda Nobunaga. She would grab that spider lily and put it on her, you know, um, new costume, which kind of resembles Oda Nobunaga from Fake and Order. As she would basically put the spider lily as kind of like a, um, you know, those types of like, um, you know, types of like, um, Tuxedos and many other like shirt uh, shirt based clothing that have like these well um flowers or handkerchiefs um as one of their like designs. That's basically what she has in that. So after she came out of that mindscape, she would basically look at herself, seeing that she kind of changed. Her skin is still pretty much dark, but her eyes, her eyes are almost a bit, you know, glinting of red and a bit of yellow, as she would try to summon in, you know, several rifles, as when she does, a rifle would basically appear in her hand, as she would say this, so, I am the successor for Oda Nomunaga, the representative for the archer class, the chosen archer, so, and apparently I also had to talk to these people, the rest of the other chosen. Uh, so, I think I should probably go to at least somewhere. I'm quite hungry. So, she would start going on to... Well, she starts going to a little restaurant where she's going to be eating at. Because many people saw her, they thought that she was, you know... I'm um, pretty much sad after knowing that, you know, all for one basically came back into the limelight and basically stole her quirk. She didn't really care though. So, she basically gone to a restaurant and basically ordered some food. 
food was actually just dumb normal-ish until a few minutes later where a couple of villains basically arrived and tried to fight them. Or more specifically, try to rob this place. When she saw this, she couldn't help but laugh as she would basically go into one of the, um, wait for a second, starts going towards the bathroom where she goes into a random stall and basically transforms. What do I mean by this? Well, she starts gaining the clothing the same as, well, Oda Nomunaga, as she would come out of nowhere and basically start shooting up the place, more specifically the villains. After she does, she would basically run away. Everybody would just be confused knowing that another vigilante has arrived, or at least a new one. Many people started calling her the, well, the, the Spider Lily girl because the most prominent part of her, you know, costume seems to be the Spider Lily. And because of this, many people start speculating who she is. But most have a theory that she's probably just a new vigilante. After seeing this on the news, she would think in her mind, Huh. Why is this kind of reminding me back when I first met Kukulin? She would kind of sigh as she would look uh, out of her window as she would think, Huh. I'm one of the Chosen. The Chosen that will bring forth a new era. An era of peace between Quirkless and the Quirk users. Uh, this is going to be quite a responsibility, and wait a minute, if the if there are others, or at least people that are also quirkless and also being turned into people just like me, then I wonder. So, let's go to a different perspective, shall we? In this case, Mount Lady right now. So... Mount Lady is currently in her apartment, basically knowing that she's quirkless, so she started going back to a normal-ish job. Mostly just being a, I guess you could say like a office worker, but most, but most of the people there basically just looked at her in sadness and also quite jealousy. What do I mean by this? Well, they're mostly jealous of her body, mostly the women. The women there are basically pretty much mad that every single person there, or more specifically in the job, basically focused on her mostly and gave her lots and lots of promotions. Because of this, they basically bullied her and sullied her name several times as she couldn't take it anymore. Mount Lady is basically at her breaking point, and she almost contemplated in thinking of committing suicide. After getting several beatings from one of the women that had a quirk, and knowing that she doesn't have her quirk anymore, it just hurts. So, wait for a second. So, one day she would be brought to one of the offices, where she was told that she's being let go. She would say in this angered rage, saying, Why? Why? I don't even have any other jobs. And as the manager would say this, well, unfortunately, I have my hands tied to my back. Unfortunately, you're being let go. So, pack all of your things and start going outside. <sighs> as he would sigh, as Mount Lady would be pissed. So, she starts packing all of her things and starts leaving the office. She doesn't have a job. Her apartment is basically brimming and brimming with more debt. As she is basically super depressed at this point now. She would start wondering if she should probably commit suicide right now, knowing that her life is going to be worse. But she would think in her mind, knowing that this person, aka Mizu Izuku um, Satanta, aka Izuku Midoriya, is still here. And knowing that he was quirkless, and also doesn't even care that he's quirkless and not only that strong she thought of that and thought if he's quirkless then then i can be strong too yeah she would start thinking as she would think in her mind maybe i should probably even marry him i mean he's pretty strong so 
as she would start thinking him, the thinking in her mind about you know him. I meant her and Izuku literally um in the bedroom. Let's just say that. And she would start drooling a little bit as she would hear a voice. She would hear Umu. So you actually like this girl. Um, you actually like this boy, right? So why not confess to him right now? As she would basically look behind her and seeing a woman, a a woman in pure white, almost resembling a bride, wielding a silver sword. This sword almost, almost kind of looks like a flame. I mean, the shape of it kind of looks like it, so... As her face, or more specifically her hair and eye color, well, her hair is completely blonde. More specifically, platinum blonde. Her eyes are completely green, as she seems to have this almost calm and almost, um, almost feminine appearance, as she would say this. So, you're my chosen. Nice to meet you. You can call me Nero, Nero Claudius, the great emperor of Rome, Umu. As when she hears this, she would say, wait, N Nero Claudius? I thought you were a man, not a, as she would say this. Yeah, I was forced to being a man, thanks to my mother. My mother was a bit of a... How do you say this? A bit of a bitch. But I don't really care anymore. Besides, she's dead. As she would say this, But why are you here? Am I just imagining things? Or as she would say this, No, you're not imagining things. I'm just going to be giving you my power. But first, you meet the train. As she would say this, wait, train, giving you my, giving, giving what? As she would say this, oh, let me just explain, because you kind of look a bit, you know, um, confused. So after she does explain, she would say this, so you're telling me that, that you are, really are Nero Claudius? And not only that, you're gonna give me your power, and you're also, as she would say this, yeah, it's a bit complicated, but still, um, by the way, if you, wait for a second, if you are pretty confused, but, um, anyway, I should probably just explain. After explaining about a and also many other things like that, and also other stuff, Mostly proclaiming about, you know, being the best emperor of Rome. Well, she would basically calm down a little bit, as she would say this. So, you'll be giving me my, or at least giving me your power, but in exchange, I have to change the world. Change its views on Quirkless, as she would say this. Umu, yeah. And also, I sort of saw into your memories and saw that you're quite jealous of your friend over there. I think her name was like Mirko? As she would say this. Um, yeah. But I was just be because. Because. As she would say this. Oh, yeah. And that boy, um, Izuku Satanta? He's also another one of the chosen. As she would say this. Uh, how did you. Wait. He's a chosen? And. Wait. Wait. Actually, that makes sense. As she would basically remember about being curious about his last name. She would basically search up Satanta and basically learn that Satanta was the original name of Kukulin. And after connecting the dots, she would realize that Kukulin is... As she would speak, is Izuku. As she would say this, Yep, anyway... You should probably be training with me. So, let's go. As, as, well, both of them would be brought to a large mindscape. Where she's in a large, almost, um, like, blinding, blinding gold, um, theater. As she would say this. Where am I? As one of them would say this, being, you know, Nero. Welcome to my auditorium. Or more specifically, my golden theater. I created it myself back in the day, but I was blamed for basically causing the fire of Rome. Actually, it was not even my fault. It's more like the nobles that were basically serving under me decided to try and, you know, discredit me. As 
she would say this, being, you know, Mount Lady. That's awful, as she would say this. Yeah, I mean, you're right, but still, I don't really care. Anyway, you should start your training now. So, she would basically bring up her sword, as her sword would create pure white flames, as these flames would start creating minions. As these minions start charging towards her, she would start training on how to use her sword, being, you know, Isis Festus, being the sword of Nero Claudius, she would start practicing it as she would learn how to use it properly, even using its flames, also known as the first flames. So, after a, a few days of training, basically at the same time as like, you know, Mirko was training, she would also basically, you know, wait for a second, she would become a master of it. After learning all of these, well, techniques from her, and also learning about her, you know, special skill being called Imperial Plur- um, I think it was called, like, Imperial Privilege, which is basically a skill that allows her to basically do any task perfectly. Let me give you an example. Um, I think I remembered in, like, um, Fate Extra CCC, more specifically the anime adaptation known as Fate, um, Fate Extra Encore, I think it was called? Yeah, it's been a long time since I've seen it, and I'm not really planning to because unfortunately, when I tried to watch it, it crashed my goddamn phone. Anyway, so, I think I remembered, um, Nero basically using it to basically control one of the ships in the, you know, um, in the city of the... I can't remember the actual city's name, but it's basically like a artificially made city, which Shinji basically controlled. That's basically what she's able to do. She's basically able to do whatever she wants. But there is a catch. If she does use it, she would basically forget about it and basically forget how to use that technique once again. Maybe until like a few days. Then she can do it perfectly once again. So... After learning all of these, well, um, you know, skills from, you know, Nero Claudius, she would basically disappear just like, you know, Oda or Oda Nobunaga. When she does, well, Mount Lady would actually feel quite happy knowing that somebody actually cares about her, just like Nero. And after learning about Izuku being one of the quirkless, you know, chosen, said to be chosen to basically make this world a better place, she would basically keep it in her mind and also her heart, wanting to make everybody happy, including the quirkless, and also punishing the so-called heroes of this society, which she learned after... Hearing about Endeavor being an abusive husband. And also father. So, after knowing about this, she would basically reappear back in her room after a few days. After learning about all of her, you know, swordsmanship, uh, being from, you know, Nero, she would basically manifest Icefestus in her hand and basically cause a bit of a ruckus. She would basically try to use it um, on one of her, you know, um, old dolls that she used to have back when she was a kid, as it would basically burn as it causes a fire, which thankfully she basically puts out. So, after doing that, she would decide to go to sleep because she's quite tired after that, you know, training session. And after knowing that, you know, Nero Claudius has gone back to the throne of heroes. And so... She would fall to sleep. So, unfortunately, this is going to be the end of this episode because, you know, um, I'm a bit tired. And also, after getting the new update for, you know, my recording software, well, or at least the recording app that I've gotten, which I mostly use for, you know, making videos, well, I don't really know how to use it anymore, but I'm still trying to, okay? If this video actually works out anyway. So, this is a this is going to be the end of this episode. And so, I hope you liked the video. Comment and subscribe, and hope to see you guys next time. Bye bye.